This is an example of the impedance simplification game in Circuit Tutor on level one. So let's open the impedance simplification game. Now when starting out this game, the first thing we would need to do would be to take a pretest, which just checks if you know how to do this uh, before you start. Um, we're gonna skip that for right now. And then the next step would be to do the tutorial, the web-based tutorial, which is basically a multiple choice type of thing um, prior to doing the exercises. So that will teach you what you need to know on how to do these exercises. So that would be very important to review that. But for right now, I'm gonna skip that to illustrate the actual exercises. Now, um, as always in Circuit Tutor, we have examples at the two different levels of difficulty on this problem. Um, and it's always a good idea to look at some of those examples um, before we start working an exercise. So let's look at one now for the easy level. And this illustrates the type of problem we're supposed to do, which is to calculate the impedance looking into this circuit. And if you're unfamiliar with impedance, again, that's where it would be crucial to view the tutorial before attempting to do the exercises. So impedance is something that really only exists in the phasor domain, whereas this circuit, if we look at it, we can see it's actually drawn in the time domain. And the reason we know that is that the values of the reactive elements are written here in farads and in henrys. So that indicates we're in the time domain. Impedance really only exists in the phasor domain, so technically it's not correct to write this on a time domain diagram, but it's hard to illustrate otherwise how we would be, uh, how we would show the objective of the problem, so it is written here. Now notice there's also another very important piece of information here, which is the frequency at which this circuit is going to operate, because that will very much affect the impedance. Impedance is a strong function of frequency when reactive elements like inductors and capacitors are present. So in this case, it says that the frequency is five kilohertz. Now, it's very important to remember that that five kilohertz is not the angular or radian frequency. It is what we might call the cycle frequency or the number of cycles per second. So a hertz, the old name for hertz um, was cycle per second. And for every cycle, in other words, every full period of a wave, there's actually two pi radians in the angular frequency. And so if we want the omega, which is the angular time frequency, <clears throat> which we will need for this problem, we would have to multiply this frequency times two pi. Forgetting to do that would be a gigantic error because a factor of two pi is about 6.28, and that will obviously have a very big effect on the value of omega. And so we have to be very careful to notice that anytime it says hertz, that that is going to be the linear time frequency, or rather the cycle uh, frequency, not the angular time frequency. And that's in spite of the fact that hertz, you could argue hertz is inverse seconds, and radian per second, which are the units of omega, are also inverse seconds, since radian is not a real unit, but nonetheless, those are not the same units because hertz is always cycles, and again, two pi radians per cycle. Okay, so, the first thing we would have to do in order to work this problem is to convert it to the phasor domain, and that's illustrated here. So this is the circuit redrawn in the phasor domain, and now you notice that the values of the capacitor and the inductor are expressed in ohms, meaning that those are now impedances. Impedances only exist in the phasor domain, not in the time domain. And we have to convert that, and this is illustrated here. So for example, to convert the linear time frequency to the angular time frequency, we would multiply the five kilohertz by two pi, giving us 10 pi kiloradians per second, or multiplying that out, it would be 31.42 kiloradians per second. Then we would have to convert, for example, the inductance value of 0 0.3 millihenries to an impedance. And for that, we have to know the formula that the inductive impedance is j omega l, where j is the square root of minus one, or what's often called i in math courses, or physics courses. Omega is the angular time frequency, and l is the inductance value. So we would put in the omega value that we just found here, 31.42 kiloradians per second, times the inductance, which is the 0.3 millihenries, 
and then multiplying that out, um, that works out to j times 9.42 ohms. Now, how do we know that that's an ohm? Because you always want to check units in a calculation. Well, basically, we're going to have Henry per second, since a radian is not a real unit. And Henry per second, as shown down here, a Henry is also known as a, a Weber per ampere, or which is where a Weber is the unit of magnetic flux. And a Weber is also a volt second. So a Henry can be considered as a volt second per ampere. And we have to divide that by seconds. So the seconds will cancel out, giving us just a volt per amp. And a volt per amp, as we know from Ohm's law, is just an ohm. Another way of saying that is a Henry could also be thought of as an ohm second. So divide by second, you get an ohm. So that does indeed give us ohms. Then converting the capacitance, the four microfarads, to an impedance, we have to use the formula that the capacitive impedance is 1 over j omega c. Those formulas generally should be memorized. Now remember that 1 over j, because j squared is negative 1, we could multiply top and bottom of this fraction by a j, and that will um, basically give us a j in the numerator, but then the j squared in the denominator by definition becomes negative 1, which we can of course just bring up in the numerator. So 1 over j is negative j. That's an important relationship to know for these problems. Then we put in the omega, which is this value here, and the capacitance. And computing that on a calculator, and I'll show you how to do that when we work an exercise, uh, will give us negative j 7.96 ohms. Um, when you work these problems, I think they will be shown actually to four significant digits, which is probably better than doing it here to three, because that'll avoid inaccuracies. Um, again, checking the units, we see that here we basically have um, one over a second here, and that'll flip upside up into the numerator rather, so you have a second per farad. And a second per farad, if you remember that a farad is a coulomb per volt, just based on the Q equals CV type of relationship for a capacitor, uh, where Q is charge, C is capacitance, and uh, V is uh, voltage. So we can replace the uh, farad by a coulomb per volt, and then the volt, of course, will go in the numerator, since the farad was in the denominator. And then remember that a coulomb per second, by definition, is an ampere. So that becomes basically um, the second per coulomb becomes one over an ampere. So we have volts per amps. And once again, volts per amps is an ohm. So once again, we do get ohms. All impedances have to be in the same units. Otherwise, we couldn't add these because you can't add things, of course, that have different units. So all impedances will always be in ohms. Notice that inductors will always have a positive imaginary impedance because of the formula J omega L whereas capacitors will always have a negative imaginary impedance because of the formula 1 over j omega c or negative j over omega c. If you don't get that type of number, then you've made a mistake. So that's an easy check. So now having converted to the phasor domain, then we remember that impedances combine just like resistors do in uh, DC circuits. And so now we just have to add up those three complex numbers. And that's pretty easy. We just do that in rectangular form here for the complex numbers. And um, you can do that on a calculator, or you could just probably do it just using the real numbers on your calculator, but it'll add up to 4.j1.47 uh, ohms. And so that would be the final impedance in the problem. So now let's work an actual problem at the easy level. And so we're being given a diagram here in the time domain, which is at the top. And we know it's time domain because we have farads, henrys. And of course, the resistor value is the same um, in the time domain and in the impedance domain. That's the only one that doesn't change. So we're not being asked to enter that down here since it's the same as what we already had. But what we do need to do is to enter the impedance of the capacitor and the impedance of the inductor. So we're going to do that right in these little text boxes. Um, and then when we've entered those numbers, then we'll just click the check impedances over here. Uh, we're not ready to combine anything in series and parallel because first we have to get into the um, uh, phasor domain, as we show down here. And we want our answers accurate to at least 1%. I would recommend really doing probably four significant digits to avoid inaccuracy. So how are we going to do that? Well, we got to notice, first of all, that the frequency is 80 hertz. So let's do this calculation now on our calculator. 
So I'm going to illustrate how to do this on a TI-84+. Plus. And we are going to be doing complex number calculations here. So just um, before we start, I'm going to make sure that we are actually in complex number mode. By default, your calculator will normally only work with real numbers. And if you try to use it that way to do these types of problems, then you will very definitely not get correct answers. So it's very important that we first go and click on the modes in our calculator. And then we're going to go down here and we see that in this row we have a choice of real, which is where you would normally be, or A plus BI, which is called the rectangular complex method, or the R e to the uh, I theta power, which is the polar mode. So I would just go down here, and normally, as I said, it would be on real. I've already put it to uh, this mode, but then you would simply go over and then hit enter to make sure that that's the mode you're operating in. If you don't do that, then um, at least in the later stages of the calculation, you'll definitely not get the right answers. Okay, so once we're done setting the mode, um, and also later for other exercises, it'll be important to set the radian or the degree mode. Since we're working entirely here in rectangular uh, form, that won't matter, and so it's already in degree mode, but uh, we would have to worry about that if we're doing other types of things. Okay, so we will enter uh, clear now is one way to get out of that. And now we need to um, do the calculation of the impedances. And so let's first do the impedance of the capacitor. And remember that formula is 1 over J omega C. So if we like, we can first compute the omega. So that's going to be 2 times pi, which is up here, um, times the uh, frequency, which is just 80. And of course, sometimes there might be, if it was kilohertz, then we would have to go second E3, for example, for the kilohertz. But in this case, it's not. So that's all we need. So that's our value of omega. 502.65 radians per second. And when doing these calculations, it's always a good idea to carry the full accuracy through, even if you're going to enter it to fewer digits in the system. Okay, so now we need um, 1 divided by parentheses. Now for J, the calculator will use the mathematician's notation of I. So the I is on the period key down here, um, but we have to push second first to get that. So that'll give us the i. And then we need the omega. So um, actually, I can go up there and select that and enter that. And then we need the uh, c. So we're going to go that times uh, 0 0.5. And that's millifarads, so that will be EE negative 3. And then we close our parentheses there, click Enter. So that's our capacitive impedance, which is negative, we'll call it J, 3.979. So let's put that in here. And we just type a J. And as I said, I will put that into four digits for accuracy. Now we need the inductive impedance in ohms. So now we will need to use the formula J omega L. So in the calculator, it's called I. Um, that times, uh, we have to go up there to get the omega again, times the L is two millihenries. So that'll be two. E negative 3, and that's what we need. So that will give us 1.005 times J. So we'll just type J 1.005 ohms. Oops, this type there, so that should have been a period. Okay, so now we just click the button that says check impedances. And it tells us that those are correct. So now we have to combine elements in series and parallel. And we do that 
much like you did, for example, in resistor simplification or in inductor and capacitor simplification if you did those tutorials previously. So we can identify that all three of these elements are in parallel because they share a pair of common nodes. And that's, we even have the nodes colored for us in this uh, level, so we can see that. So we're just gonna click all three of them. May as well do all three at once, it's probably more efficient. And we're gonna combine those in parallel. Now you won't, of course, see the answers printed here, um, but um, let's go about computing that. So we need to add uh, because we're adding in parallel, and these are impedances, we have to take the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocals of each of those three impedances. So we're going to enter 1 divided by parentheses. And then the first one is uh, 4. So we could just type uh, 1 divided by 4, if you like, plus, and now I'm going to use parentheses because um, this involves a product. So we're going to have uh, J1. Oh, I'm sorry, that uh, I forgot the one there. So we have to have one over parenthesis. And we have I1. Of course, we don't really need the one. So I'll just leave it without that. And we close the parenthesis there. So we didn't really need those parentheses because it was just a one. If I type the one, then we'd need the parentheses. And then we have one divided by parentheses i uh, actually I should have made that a negative i. So I'm going to make that negative i times 3.98 just use implicit multiplication here. Close that. And then we have to close the other uh, parenthesis that we used for the reciprocal. Now, if we've done everything right, that will give us the value of the total impedance, which is 0 0.4012 plus J times 1.202, rounding that to four digits. So 0 0.4012 plus J 1.202. So let's try that. And indeed that is correct. And now we've simplified it down to a single element. So all we have to do is say cannot simplify further. And I should point out that there's also a help function. Um, there's also gonna be a video help button when you do the exercise, which is what I'm recording now, so it's not there yet. And uh, if you get stuck and you just don't know what to do at any point, you can, of course, give up by clicking this Give Up button. And there's no penalty as far as your grade. You'll just have to work a new problem from the beginning of the same type, but it'll be a different problem. So you can always give up in Circuit Tutor for no penalty. Um, that's a basic philosophy of the system. Okay, so we're done now. So we click Cannot Simplify Further, and it tells us we have completed a problem. And now it's just automatically giving me another problem, but I'm going to uh, basically stop there since we've done one problem. The other problem would be similar. These are now in series rather than parallel. So remember that in series, we would simply add those impedances. And once again, we would have to convert the capacitance and the inductance to impedances at the frequency. And this time it's 0.7 kilohertz. And so that would be a little bit different calculation, but it would be similar to what we just did. So. Um, that completes the problem.